Hey, good morning. Uh, thanks for attending this first meeting of the Chesapeake Alliance Leadership Circle. Uh, it's very exciting. We have 51 businesses that have joined in just two months. Um, and we have many more businesses that have been reaching out to learn more about our group. So as you look around here, uh, these are the influencers that I uh, that, that have come from the city of Chesapeake. Uh, in the business community and the future of what we want to see in the city. So really excited about the 51 businesses that have joined. Look around this group. Thank you for coming. Thank you for participating. So I think you can look around and see this is <coughs> really going to be different than probably anything we've seen in Chesapeake. So really excited about that. I do want to get started by thanking and introducing Bill Young. Bill, where are you somewhere? Um, Bill is CFO of Four Kids. Um, who will tell us a little more about four kids and the landmark set. Bill, if you want to come up here and have our prices right entry. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. So I get to do the quick welcome. Uh, we're behind the podium because of the webcam being up there. I think we're trying to record this as well, but I get to do the two minute welcome to four kids. You're in the Landmark Center, so we have been in this building now for a year. Several of you have been here before, so of you, this is your first time. But uh, Four Kids is really excited to move to Chesapeake about a year ago. Uh, we were in Norfolk for 30 years beforehand. We work with homeless and unstably housed families across the <coughs> region, and we're able to build this 60,000 square foot building that you're in now, which houses 20 families in emergency shelter on the other end, along with five classrooms yes. below that, along with the kitchen. Um, and then as you move this way, you have 100 staff that are working with families both here, but another couple hundred families across the region. So we're excited to play that part. And I've really been excited for this building to really play a part to both support our work as well as to be a place for a community conversation and to be a real citizen of Chesapeake, not just to serve the families and the staff that work here. So I put my, my little ad out, which is if you've got a regional group, it's a great location, easy to get to, uh, very well suited to having folks in love to have other people use the building uh, so please let me know we also work on the kindness of strangers so your checks can be made out before <laughs> you can. Uh, but uh would love to also if you'd like to take a tour of the building and understand a little bit more about what we do just reach out to me and uh and we can connect and give you a, a tour of the building and get pretty excited to talk about what we do and it is heated and cool I so thank you very much yeah. um, so <laughs> but uh but yeah so we're excited to be here excited to have you guys here and uh see where we go from here so thanks okay thank you bill that yeah. um before i introduce our speaker susan batali um, you, you also know as a council member i would like her to see the type of group that we have built so far, so she can go back and tell the other members of uh, council who and are what we're doing. I also want for everyone, a lot of people here are familiar with other people here and other people aren't. Um, but I would like to start out and it can be quickly or not quickly, but I would like, we're gonna start over here. I'd like for each person to stand up, tell us your name, what business you are, who you work for, and any other information that you want to tell us. So I think I'm gonna start off the meeting with just that. And let's do that real quick. Uh, good morning, everyone. I get the fortune since I sat right here this evening. <laughs> so I'll stumble through this and make everyone feel better, feel better as they introduce themselves. I'm Chris Gullickson. Had to be director of economic development at the Port of Virginia, and also really proud to have lived here in Chesapeake for 14 years. Have uh, two children that go to school in the community, and, and really excited to be part of the Chesapeake Alliance. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity. Thank you. Good morning, JD Miles with JD Miles and Sons. We are a uh, roofing contracting firm right down the street. I've uh, been in South Norfolk uh, before Chesapeake was Chesapeake um, since 1910. So very happy to be here. I'm Claudia Cotton. Good morning. I'm CEO of the Coastal Virginia Building Industry Association. Most of you probably knew us as Tidewater Builders Association. 
Um, as the pandemic hit, we merged with the Peninsula Home Builders Association. So now we're a true regional organization representing the residential construction industry. Glad to be here. Thank you, Paul. Good morning, I'm Mike Koss with Southern Bank and we're excited uh, to be building our new headquarters for Chesapeake right outside of Summit Point. So you'll get more info on that as we open in hopefully January. So glad to be here. Good morning, Rhonda Bridgman with Comfort Systems of Virginia and partners with Eric Stickler at the other end with uh, <laughs> Good morning, I'm Dr. Stephanie Mariano and I'm an ophthalmologist in Chesapeake. I've been in practice, I won't say exactly how long, but I've been <laughs> <laughs> And I'm um, really looking forward to seeing the Chesapeake Alliance move forward and very honored to be a member. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm Chase Townsend uh, with Truist Bank. I do commercial and uh, middle market banking and I've lived in Chesapeake since 1985. So very proud to be part of this group. Um, my name is Catherine McGill from um, Bridge uh, International and Bright Creations International. We uh, help our clients promote their business through promotional products. Uh, I moved here uh, from China. Good morning, everyone. I'm Troy Lindsay with Dominion Energy, and I can tell you I'm all in for Chesapeake. I went to Indian River, married my wife from Western Branch, and my two kids went to Hickory. So Chesapeake is, is in our DNA here. I have to be. Morning, Max Bartholomew. Maybe that's a trick question about what I am or what. <laughs> Former yeah. regional director of state and local affairs, now retiree and uh, consultant contractor for Dominion, working on the most exciting project in the history of Virginia, and that'd be the Coastal Virginia Offshore Wind Project. So would like to extend an invitation. Anybody wants to take a ride 27 miles an hour on leisure <laughs> a day? And uh, we do have some restrictions. I haven't been able to get a cooler beer on there yet. <laughs> <laughs> glad to be here. Glad to be working with you. Thank you, David. Uh, good morning, Eric Keplinger uh, with MEB. We're in Cavalier Industrial Park and have been for 25 years or so. We recently uh, expanded our office, doubled in size. So uh, we're obviously proud citizens of Chesapeake, and I'm happy to be here as well. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ellen Coley, co owner of Law Firm Reeves Coley. Our headquarters is in Chesapeake. Um, we have a small office in Northern Virginia, but all in all, we have about 17 attorneys, and I've lived in Chesapeake for 13 years now. Great. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Mary D'Amato. I'm a newbie. <laughs> I've only been here a year and a half, but I'm really glad to be here. Uh, my company is 3D Coaching and Consulting. I'm a leadership expert. I work with both small and large businesses. I specialize in working with women in mostly uh, traditional male-dominated uh, industries and the men they work with. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Shane Roddy with EIT Services. We're located in Great Ridge. Uh, we love Chesapeake. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, I'm Eric Stickler with Heartland Construction, as, as Rhonda alluded to, or other half in the business world there. Uh, we had just recently opened a brand new facility out in the Western Branch area of Chesapeake as well. So, thank you. Uh, I'm Tim DePace, just like she said, I'm a newbie, uh, retiring from the government. I've worked there for 40 years with a defense intelligence agency. So. And I'm so happy to meet Ellen. I'm Diana Burke with The Rocks. Um, <laughs> And Dave, thank you for letting me come. I'm going to announce to the world now the Rocks is, is suspending its service on Sunday. So if you're looking for some great employees, we have many. I know workforce <laughs> is always an issue. And I'm just putting my resume out there, too. <laughs> thank you, Dave, for letting me come. But um, I've been a resident of Chesapeake for 30 years, raised my children here. I'm a Hokie. So, um, you know, so so pleased and honored to be here. Thank you. And luckily, we got her check before they. Yeah, I know. Thank God. So I told her she's good for a year, no matter what. <laughs> and I'm, I'm Kim Hubbard. I've lived in Chesapeake for 40 years. Uh, worked in South Norfolk here for many years. I own Centerville Waterway Marina now at the Centerville Bridge. And I will have a boat with beer on it if anybody wants to go out there. <laughs> and, uh, we, we're happy to be here, and I'm a small business. <laughs> 
Morning, I'm Curtis Bird. I uh, live here in Chesapeake, work for Chesapeake Regional Healthcare as the Director of Advocacy. If you haven't noticed on Battlefield Boulevard, there's a lot going on at the hospital. Uh, very exciting time. Uh, our, our board authority chair is here. Uh, she may not tell you that when she introduces herself. And two of our former authority board chairs, uh, Rhonda and uh, Dr. Mary know. So, uh, but we're about to get the keys. Uh, to the tower, so to speak, and start moving uh, into the uh, into the expanded the critical care tower. So we invite you all to come by and check it out. But uh, thanks, David, for, for having us be a part of this. So good morning, everyone. My name is Susan, like the four. I just haven't been out here. So Susan Roberts. Um, I was a lifelong resident in Virginia Beach until about a year ago. I moved to Chesapeake. Um, I'm a principal at Charette Agency, which is the marketing and communications firm. I'm excited to be a part of this group because I think our relationships with all the cities in Hamley Roads is incestuous. So I know a lot of people in this room from my work in Virginia Beach, and I'm looking forward to expanding into Chesapeake. Hi, I'm Jamie Kennedy. I grew up in Great Bridge, graduated from Great Bridge a long time ago. I'm a forensic CPA that works for myself. And I specialize in small businesses and expert testimony if you have any fraud or embezzlement type issues. Good morning, my name is Jeremy Stein. I'm the Vice President of Century Security Systems. We've been here at Chesapeake for 33 years now and uh, super excited to be a part of the group. Malay Tucker with LTD Hospitality Group. We recently in 2019 moved to Virginia Beach, but we were headquartered in uh, Chesapeake for about 25 years when my father uh, started the business uh, way back when. And uh, we still have uh, five hotels in uh, Chesapeake and we're uh, excited to be part of this group. Hey, good morning, Rusty Bailey. I'm with Marshall McClendon. Um, I was forced here to marriage at Chesapeake and will never leave. <laughs> I'm be part of this group and uh, it's exciting to see what's going on in Chesapeake. Do I want to go back in the corner? Yeah, I'm Tony Thiel. I'm a retired uh, real estate lawyer. Uh, lived in Chesapeake since '84. My wife grew up on Greenbrier Farms, so uh, the dirt of Chesapeake is deep in my feet. <laughs> uh, my wife went to Great Bridge. My children went to Great Bridge. Uh, I'm from Ohio originally. But, uh, <laughs> don't hold it against me. Uh, I've been very active in Chesapeake for, for a lot of years, and, and glad I could be continue to be part of this organization. Although we are looking for people lots younger. <laughs> Hi, my name is Grady Palmer. I'm a lawyer with Williams Mullen. I uh, do a lot of work here in Chesapeake for real estate development on behalf of Dragas and others uh, in the community. I um, was a former chair of this organization when it was like just me, Max, Tony, and a few others. So very glad to see that this has expanded to uh, really, I think, what Chesapeake is, which is that this is, I think, a profile of what Chesapeake business community is. So we're <coughs> very excited to see the, this group expand uh, to include all of you. So thank you. I'm Nick Baum. I'm uh, Senior Vice President of the Dragas Companies. Uh, we're based out of Virginia Beach. We've got multiple large uh, projects in Chesapeake. I'm a 17-year resident of Chesapeake transplant from the Outer Banks. And to echo what Grady said, I mean, this is exciting to see the groups. I was in a couple of alliance meetings with four or five people, and this is, we've talked about it for years, what it has to be for us to take next steps in Chesapeake. Really excited. A lot of strong credentialed people all across the board. I know a lot of you folks, and I'm uh, really just happy to be here with such a strong group. Mm -hmm. Amy Harris, I'm here with um, Hammond Insurance for a full service property and casualty agency. Live in Great Bridge. My kids go to Great Bridge Intermediate and happy to be here. I'm Christy Wooten. I'm the owner of Wooten Law Group. We're primarily a domestic relations firm. So if I know you in that way, I won't acknowledge that. <laughs> I'm also the chair of Chesapeake Regional Healthcare, following in the footsteps of two wonderful ladies. And um, as Curtis says, uh, you see, we're up and growing. We're the cornerstone of the community, um, as many of you know. So um, if you um, need to adopt a baby or need a tour of the cancer center, we'd like to write a check there. Come see. <laughs> I had to twist Christy's arm just a little. She's so busy with the hospital and everything else. I said, you don't have to do anything but come drink coffee for an hour and then you can go. It's all good. I'm Lindsay Elliott with Brittle Associates Commercial and Industrial Real Estate here in Chesapeake. Um, grew up in Great Bridge, still reside in Great Bridge with uh, my two kids. I'm Dawn Matheson. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an ambassador for waterway tourism in Chesapeake. I've lived here for 25 years and I'm excited to be here as well. I'm Kevin Cosgrove. I'm an attorney with Hunt and Andrews Kurth. Uh, I've been in Chesapeake since 1985. 
Uh, my wife is a uh, Chesapeake native. She born and raised in uh, the St. Brides area. All three of our kids went through the Greenbrier school system. I've been involved in a lot of organizations uh, around here, and I really hope to help this organization make a difference because Chesapeake has needed something like this for a long time. My name is Teresa Peters. I'm president of Stamp Partners. We're a real estate development company. We own several shopping centers here in Chesapeake, and I've been a resident of Chesapeake since I um, got married many, many, many years ago. <laughs> and I'm glad to see um, this alliance come together, something Chesapeake's needed for a long time. I'm Bill Black, and Jeff, I, I really started my, my uh, working career in the city of Chesapeake as a firefighter and uh, have been in the development and building business for the last uh, 30, 35 years. Uh, uh, I'm the co-owner of uh, Atlantic Land Development. And, uh, we are located on Great Ridge Boulevard. We built the Ashton Commerce Center and uh, we're in the front office there. And uh, just really excited to see this group come together uh, and uh, just to be a participant in it. So, so thank you. Good morning, Lacey Shirey. I'm the executive director with the Chesapeake Humane Society. Uh, we have our veterinary clinic, which is on Battlefield Boulevard. And uh, as of January, we just expanded into a new building with our shelter um, off of Cedar Road, the former Las Gavietas Pet Hotel. So we're really excited to have uh, recently expanded and uh, hope that you'll come out and visit our shelter. I've lived in Chesapeake for about 17 years, and um, the community has always been very important to me, so I'm honored to be part of this group. Thank you. I'm going to do Susan and Dan. Oh, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Dan Bell. I uh, there's, an, there's a title of executive director. It doesn't matter. I just, I just try to help out. <laughs> I'm a retired uh, technology executive, uh, born and raised in Chicago, and I, I have to tell you this, this story that, in, uh, and I've been here for running up on 20 years. But uh, when I was looking at, uh, at taking a job, my predecessor where I ended up at, at Cannon in, in Chesapeake said, uh, uh, we're in Hampton Roads and, and I'm a Chicago, downtown Chicago. Like, What's a Hampton Roads? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, well, we're at the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. I said, okay, I'm there. And he says, are you familiar with Norfolk? Yes. Virginia Beach, yes. Chesapeake? I said, yeah, less so, but yes. And so uh, we, we, we took the, the trip out here, the, uh, the scouting trip, it's fantastic. We moved here, we, we love it, just because it's a great place. And I think uh, uh, when we look at the opportunities that, that, that this city has, um, we, can, we can absolutely uh, do some wonderful things. But anyway, so we love it in Chesapeake, again, 20 years, and I'll get around to giving my forwarding address to my family, one of these. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Good morning. My name is David Roth. I grew up in Western Branch. Uh, gosh, that was about 40 years ago, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, I spent my career in uh, Greenbrier, Great Bridge, Hickory. He lives all over the city. So, been in banking for 30 years, retired a couple of years ago. So, I know a lot of you guys are most of you people, but I want to tell you, I'm honored to be a part of this group. I mean, look around here. So, yeah, for someone that's been in the community for a long time, the business community, to look around and see these type of people that will give their time to come to a meeting like this. So you got to take it, go back and say, it. hey, this because oh these are people that are going to be influencers in the community. There's some things that we expect out of city council going forward. So you may get some phone calls. I found that. I hope so. Right here. <laughs> so was, that's yeah, part, we're here. part of the deal. <laughs> yeah, we can, so we're here to support city council on projects in the business community and maybe. We may have some ideas for you later on that, you know, after we've been a few times on what we'd like to see out of city council. So, but, so thank you to everybody for being here. So um, there are a couple of people that are not here. Uh, that's um, Sanjay Patel. I don't know if you know it's, uh, Sanjay. He has 51 franchises in Hampton Road. And I think he owns five or six in Chesapeake. Uh, he really wanted to come. Uh, he's, he, he got sick this morning. Um, Sandra Baines, I don't know if you know Sandra, she's from Baines Rettenauer. She retired a couple of years ago. She's with the hospital authority as her own consulting group, and she wants to be here as well. So another couple of people that really want to be involved in this group we couldn't make it today. So anyway, let me launch the slides. Okay. I want to do an introduction first. How about that? Yeah. So anyway, I want to um, thank Susan uh, for being the first speaker at our, at our, at our group. 
Um, Council of Susan Vitale took office in July 1st, 2018, with more than 30 years of expertise in executive leadership, strategic planning, program management, and organization transformations. Upon graduation from college, Susan received her commission in the United States Navy and received orders to Hampton Roads. She served numerous tours of duty as an intelligence officer, both at sea and ashore, while based in northern and coastal Virginia and Japan. She hunted Soviet submarines during the Cold War and was one of the first women permanently assigned to a U.S. aircraft carrier. Traveling the world and visiting more than 25 countries during her career, Susan retired after 26 years of naval service, choosing Chesapeake as her permanent home. Susan joined Microsoft Corporation in 2015 and is a managing director responsible for the enterprise service business op supporting federal government agencies that include the U.S. Department of State, U.S. Department of the Treasury, U.S. Senate, and the U.S. House of Represent Representatives. Susan holds a Bachelor of Science degree in accounting from the Rochester Institute of Technology, Rochester, New York, and a Master's of Business Administration degree with Tour University International. Her daughter is an elementary student in Chesapeake Public Schools. Affiliations include active member of Hickory United Methodist Church, life member of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, member of the Naval Intelligent Professionals, member of the Central Chesapeake Republican Women's Club, and member of the Republican Party of Chesapeake. So, Susan, thank you for being here. Dan, I'll get out of your way. That's <laughs> no, it's really not, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Dan. I'll tell you what, and I'll do it too, so I know I've got to stay in the right place for yeah, the yeah, camera. Um, and I'm a wanderer, so that's going to be tough for me. You but, can you know, uh, I'll be. Uh, I'll try to stay in one place. Well, I'm overwhelmed. Going around this room, I, you know, it is just. First of all, I'm very honored to be the first. I didn't, you know, realize I was the first. So. Kind of like getting off the pumped on that, but um, but thank you so much for having me. And isn't it wonderful to be here in South Norfolk and to be here with more kids? This has been a dream come true. Um, I look out and I'm like, man, this is this is all <clears throat> revitalized. That's so exciting. This is Cla Claudia and I have had many talk about this, so it's exciting to see this come to fruition. So uh, today I'm going to talk to you, and I apologize. I know some of you all over here are probably kind of in your neck a little bit, and I apologize, but I think I have to stay kind of in this general area to be able to be seen. We'll put press it over here a little bit. Um, but I'm here today to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, and I'll tell you why. Because broadband, and some of you are all going, um, and that's okay, we're going to get there. Um, broadband is doing exactly what you all are doing, energizing the business community and being able to make Chesapeake a better place, and not just Chesapeake, but our region. A better place. And so I'm excited to talk to you about what we've done here at Chesapeake, what we're doing as a region, and um, you know how this is going to really impact you know you all as, as business leaders in Chesapeake, as well as you know the rest of it. There's a lot of other goodness that comes out of this beyond the business world, but we're going to try to focus on that today. So here was the problem. You know, I, I took office 40 years ago, and at that time, you know. Broadband wasn't something that was in our normal vernacular. Now you're hearing it a lot more uh, post pandemic, especially. But at that time, you know, we didn't really, you know, broadband was kind of like, what is it, right? And truthfully, you know, I want to be, you know, very open. Y'all, many of you may not know what real broadband is, right? And that's okay because, uh, you know, it, it is kind of a, a, a nebulous thing when we talk about it. People say, well, isn't that just the internet? Mm, sort of. It's high speed internet, you know, and it's in, a, in to kind of, you know, um, put it in layman's terms. You know, it's about being able to transmit massive amounts of data very quickly. And that is so important because as we move, you know, into the uh, future, we have to be able to move massive amounts of data. We need to be able to have the ability to do things like quantum computing. And, um, and so that's why this is going to be um, a, a, a transformational um, uh, project. So you may have noticed, you know, we've had pretty much a limited number of server and providers in this area. Um, the providers that we've had have been wonderful partners, but, you know, it's been limited. And, you know, so we look at that and say, gosh, 
when you have limited internet providers, you end up having often, you know, higher costs because, you know, it's about what the market can bear. Um, sometimes you can't get out to more regional, you know, more rural areas because it just isn't feasible to, and, and it doesn't make good business sense to go out to some of those rural areas where there's just not a lot of population. Um, so we had a lot of underserved and unserved areas, um, you know, and a lot of missed opportunities. And that's where, you know, I, I looked at what was going on. I said, we're really going to make South Norfolk and the other parts of Chesapeake, um, you know, the best that they can be. We've got to be able to have investment and you have to have an infrastructure, an invisible infrastructure, you know, I'll bet, but it's an infrastructure that will allow us to be able to connect the entire city and with our world. And what we, are, we had a great opportunity. So, you know, you'll hear the term broadband brought up across the country. There are lots of cities and lots of regions that are putting together broadband networks where we can have high speed internet capability. But we are unique, and this is what everybody in this room needs to understand. We are unique because we are becoming a digital port. Now, what that means is that there, are, there are, used to be two, you know, kind of focus areas where these big, huge undersea cables, uh, they're, they're only about this big, but they, they carry massive amounts of data uh, from Europe, from Africa, from South America. And these cables coming in used to only connect to pretty much like Miami and New York. And after Sandy came through New York, they realized, wow, we probably need to be like putting them somewhere else too. Um, and so that's where we ended up getting the Mariah cable, Mariah cable came over first and landed in Virginia Beach. With that, we are now connected to the world. And why that's important is that when you think about big data uses, and, and <coughs> to put this into perspective for you, if you took every movie ever made in every language ever spoken, and you sent it from Europe to Virginia Beach on the Mariah cable or any of these cables, it would take 60 seconds. Okay, I hear some of y'all going, oh, wow, that's amazing. It is amazing. For those of us who grew up where, you know, you'd hit the, you know, the key for the next website and you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> and, but, you know, and you'd sit there and see the spinning, you know, yeah. you know, that is mind boggling. So we have a unique opportunity here in, in this region. And because of that, when I took office four years ago, I was like, well, what is Justin doing? You know, where, where are we on this? I've met with our CIO who had just taken, um, you know, office about six months earlier, said, Scott, what are we doing here in, in Chesapeake? He goes, we don't have anything. I said, we don't have anything, we got nothing. We have basically no, you know, we have not laid any infrastructure. Virginia Beach had, had done some things, Gulf had had, but really this was kind of an infancy. So I looked at him, I said, all right, how long is it gonna take for us to you know, have zero plan to be able to put shovels in the ground. And he kind of shook his head and went, wow. It's like council was probably gonna be like, I'd say about five years if we're lucky. You know, I go, well, to paraphrase Top Gun, you've got three. We're gonna make this happen in three. So while there's, excuse me, while there is a, um, you know, regional effort going on, there's also, you know, in parallel than a Chesapeake effort going on called Chesapeake Connects. And that, that is, um, we, have, we have just broken ground on our South Side network, on our regional network. We did that on April 6th, and we're getting ready to break ground on the Chesapeake network. Yeah, that's worth the applause. You know. <laughs> It's because we have such an amazing staff that, you know, I, I will tell you that when, you know, as, as city council, my job is to kind of break down barriers and make connections, right? That's what I view my, my, my job to be. You know, it's about being able to make impact. And I looked at this, you know, this term as basically the same as being in one of my Navy tours, you know, Navy tours about three years, maybe four, you know, you have that long to make impact and you got to leave it better. So, to be able to have this at a place where now we will be operational at the end of 2023 with both the regional ring and Chesapeake's ring, 
that's just unbelievable. And it's because of this incredible city staff that we have. So we start, we can't, you know, I've mentioned the South Side Network Authority the, uh, and the uh, regional rent. You know, you can't talk about one without the other. We created, you know, the five South Side cities decided when, you know, the, we saw this opportunity that we need to come together. We need to be able to make this a regional approach. We're really going to be strong. So you can see here how we had a, um, our first ring is going is you know more centered around Suffolk, Portsmouth, Gulf, Virginia Beach, and Chesapeake. But eventually, this will reach out into the other areas of our um, Hampton Roads as well as the peninsula, and that's what we're working on now because now um, we've actually already you know broken ground on this regional ring. And by the way, again, you know in four years ago we had a thirty percent design. And now we have broken ground and are expecting to be up and running by uh, December of 2023. So just amazing how fast we've gone. And that was all done before the pandemic. If we had not had the forethought to do this before the pandemic, we would be where a lot of other municipalities are right now, where they're just starting to go, oh my gosh, okay, we got to do this. Well, is there any fiber left? You know. We have our five, we're ready to go. We are already ahead of the ball. And um, yeah, it's just exciting because we're gonna be in a much better place and a much more competitive place in the future. So I want you to think about broadband like a highway, all right? What we're doing here is, you know, we're building, you know, the interstate. And we're not going to tell who can, you know, ride on it, we're building the interstate in part, especially in Chesapeake, but you know, especially with the uh, also with the regional ring, so that the municipalities can talk and use it and have that. We're going to have a small portion of it, but we're building in a lot more excess capacity, what we call dark fiber, unlit fiber, fiber that is going to be available to anyone who would like to come in and lease it from us. So what does that do? That starts to invite other internet providers to come in. And that means that we're going to have more competition, and that means lower internet rates for all of us. It means that we are going to have businesses come in, and that's the part that really you know excites me um, because this is opening up opportunities in Europe. It's going to open up opportunities for all sorts of different types of manufacturing, and it's going to do amazing things for our schools, for our public safety, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that soon. So what we're doing is here's the interstate system for the U.S. Right. Here's our interstate system. This is the broadband ring and we're in the blue and you can see where it goes. Um, and so once with this ring, what we're doing with Chesapeake is leveraging pieces, just like all the other cities, they're leveraging a piece of it that then they use for the rest of their city. All right, and, they, and we build out the rest of the city. You know, as I mentioned, there's a lot of reasons why we wanna do this. And you know, it, they, there's, you know, again, you know, public safety opportunities to be able to you know, have next generation, this uh, 911. But when it comes to uh, you know, economic development, you, know, you have to think about who are those users gonna be? The banking industry, there's no mistake why all the banks are you know, sitting in Manhattan. You know, those, the top banks are, you know, because that's right next to the water. When latency matters, you know, how, how many of you have been in your um, house and you've been, had two televisions on at the same time, right? And most of us are on cable. And you know, your kitchen, your kids are watching one in the living room, you're in the kitchen, this is what happens in my house with my daughter. You know, and you end up having, um, you know, you're hearing the, the same show, but you hear it like, you know, a fraction of a second later over here. Yeah. You know, have you ever had that? Mm -hmm. You know, that's latency, all right? That's because the signal comes in and now it's hit here and now it's got to hit over here. Well, latency in your house, probably not that big a deal. But when you're talking about the, the speed of business, latency is a big issue. When you talk about certain you know, industries, you want that uh, ability to transact that, you know, either financial issue, you, know, you need to have the data to be able to do research. You need to be able to have, you know, um, you know uh, advanced technology uh, manufacturing. You, those things you need instantaneous. And where is that? It's right here. It's right here in Hampton Roads. It's right here in Chesapeake. Because we have you know, the opportunity in the land and the, the, the um, you know, folks like you to be able to take advantage of it. 
and to take this and now bring we can bring in even greater business opportunities for our for our area. You know, I talked about what it also does. Well, it also helps with our, you know, our public safety. Yeah, that's incredible. Obviously, you know, we can't be a, expect to be a great city unless we're a safe city. And so by being able to take advantage of things like next generation 911, which just just stood up, um, exciting stuff where now, you know, I mean, think of the future where we're going to be, you know, there's a car accident. And before the police even are able to get there, a drone's already on its way, taking pictures and now giving direction to the people on the ground saying, hey, go ahead and start chest compressions. You know, I know this sounds like, wow, that sounds like Star Trek type stuff. But believe me, this is coming. And it's those kind of things that we can take advantage of to be make Chesapeake even better and to have grow our business. Flooding is always an issue. And you know, things like broadband are what brings the internet of things, which is sensors, putting sensors in strategic places so that we can be monitoring and know, okay, push the traffic over this way and make sure that that stop, you know, that, that light is red so that we can reroute traffic over here. You know, those are the kind of things that smart city and, and that we can do for, with, uh, with broadband. You know, the Navy and, and our military are a big part of also, you know, our, of our community and, you know, what makes our economy very stable as well. And so having this um, broadband also kind of future proofs us when it comes to BRAC. You know, the Navy wants to be 30% of their local work, workforce to be able to telework. You know, this is going to allow that because that's what, you know, hybrid workforce is now a reality, right? I mean, I work for Microsoft and I will tell you that I've been, you know, working from home from day one. We taught the world how to work from home. And I was, I, I remember, you know, years ago, I'd be sitting on the beltway going, oh my gosh, long before I ever, you know, knew I was going to work for Microsoft. I sit there and think, my gosh, this traffic is ridiculous. And you know what? Until the federal government realizes that they can work from home, we are never going to get out of this doom loop. And you know what? COVID kind of pushed us there, right? Now, for the last two years, I've been working to show the Department of State and the IRS and all these other organizations that they don't have to be sitting at their desk; they can be sitting from home, and that they too can be able to, you know, have a telework opportunity even in the federal government. And we're doing it successfully. And that's what this is going to be for the future. This is, we are never going back, folks. I mean, there will be certain industries, certainly, that we have to be on site, but there are a lot of industries that are we're going to be doing this hybrid work approach. And we've got to be able to have the infrastructure to be able to provide that. You know, I love to say that, you know, our region's quality of life attracts workers, but the regional ring is going to allow it to thrive. That's where, you know, we it, it's it's a big holistic approach right it requires us to have good housing and it requires us to have you know businesses that are willing to invest and be here and jobs that you know creating jobs but if we don't have the infrastructure you know we're just going to be you know more stalled than we would otherwise what does the regional rain cost well it was about 23 it's about 23 million dollars um and i am very excited because part of this parallel effort that I've worked on was getting all five Southside cities to bring to get forward $5 million each to pay for this. We are fully funded. We have broken ground and this is done. So very excited. Another applause, come on. Yeah. So, you know, this is amazing, fully funded. And what's great about this again, is that the operating costs are paid for by, they will be, by, the dark fiber that we lease out and we get revenue from that. And by the way, we do the same thing in Chesapeake because the, South, the, the regional ring enables every city to go and do what they want with their portion. So this is where you see the purple is the regional ring. You can see that we are, there's a point. <coughs> right there. So this is the you know, regional ring. Here's the Chesapeake ring, and you can see it's a multi-phase ring. We've got about three different sections of it, um, and it, you notice that we connected not only every municipal center, so every precinct, every fire department, the, it goes around that area. 
we also made sure that we included every economic development center. So this regional ring goes through everywhere in the entire city, uh, all the way down to Frank T. Williams Farm, out into Southern Chesapeake, where our farmers who have been using farm equipment that has never been able to be connected to the internet because there is no internet. There's nothing for them to be able to take advantage of the latest and greatest farm equipment. So now they're gonna have that opportunity. Now, this is not uh, what we call last mile. It's called middle mile because I believe and the approach that we have taken is that government provides the middle mile, the, the, the uh, interstate, if you will, and that we use ourselves, but that private sector, you know, is going to provide that last mile. So internet companies taking it out to the homes, you know, businesses being able to bring it down to, you know, economic development centers that they want to use. So that's what that last mile is. And that's where, you know, the private sector takes over and our free market enterprise um, goes to work. So, what we did with um, Chesapeake Connect on this parallel path with the regional, you know, we, and I, I, we deliberately did not make them dependent on each other, but they, you know, so that just in case anything happened here, Chesapeake's would still go forward. Fortunately, both have been smooth sailing and we're, uh, you know, in a good place there. But the bottom line is being able to take advantage of them together makes us even stronger. And so this is going to allow for you know, a catalyst for private investment. It's going to be a catalyst for community and economic development. And so, you know, having this, you know, with the schools, the libraries, you know, can you imagine our school kids, you know, not only are we talking about them being able to finally do their homework without having to go to a parking lot, you know, at a McDonald's or, you know, into a, a near Starbucks, but actually being able to have that right at their home, no matter where they live in the city, you know, that, is just the tip of the iceberg. Think about being able to have exchanges with you know, schools in Germany. And you know, I mean, because the data lines will be available to us. That's, that's just amazing. Um, and again, it's fully funded. Did I mention it's fully funded? <laughs> awesome. So the, uh, and that by the way, our ring is about $41 million. We've got a lot, a lot of miles in Chesapeake. 117 miles for our regional ring, 167 miles for our ring, okay, just for our city alone, but we're investing in it because it, it's, it's critical. It's critical infrastructure, and our city council recognized that. So, uh, so you can see again where we are. It's going to be up and operational in parts. We're actually doing this in a um, kind of a multi-build uh, area. Because we were able to get all, you know, the funding up, uh, up front, which is huge, but um, we were able to, you know, work with um, kind of our funding as well as um, just, you know, uh, some of our uh, uh, capital and, uh, investment funding. We are um, probably going to be starting our ring in multiple places. So you can see where our ring is here, but uh, we're looking at having multiple contractors being able to, you know, work so that we can get this thing up and working faster. Um, all of the pieces don't have to be up in order to be to have the capability. So as soon as one area is up, we can start using that. Um, it's um, so that that connectivity doesn't have to be complete. Same thing with the regional ring. We're going to be doing multiple areas to bring it up a little faster and not just build literally linearly. Um, but by doing that, we're going to still be able to have um, operational you know, capability as soon as those areas are up. All right. So I think that's about it. Um, I got a question, quick question. Sure. And then it's one connection. Yeah. What's happening there? So we just started. Um, I'm, I'm also the chair of the Southside Network Authority, and that, you know, so I've been working both of these very, very, you know, um, strongly. The, uh, um, the, Peninsula, we've just uh, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, started really getting into more intense discussions about um, moving the ring, connecting the ring up into the peninsula. Um, there are some of the municipalities were kind of like, well, I don't think we need that, do we? And we had to go up and say, no, no, you do. And, it, you know, we're going to be stronger together. We're going to be better together. So, um, and they're responding to that. You know, so, well, we have uh, 
NASA, JLab, and Langley. Yeah. We have all the high speed. Uh, we need you're not connected to their yeah. network. Yeah, and and that's those are the folks that are actually like, yes, I'm slow. So good. So what other questions do we have? <laughs> I, I want everybody to walk out of here with the experts on yeah. Chesapeake Grain and broadband. So here's your opportunity uh, to be an expert. Kim. <laughs> I'm pretty, I don't know a whole lot about what you're talking about other than what I hear and read here in the newspaper, but I thought we had to rely totally on the federal, federal government for this. For That's what they lead us to believe for this type of thing. Broadband. See, you just can't. Listen. I know we can, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying this sounds like it was done on a local level, it which was. I'm tickled to death to hear. Yeah, it really was. Um, we, we start, when we started this when you know, particularly the Chesapeake ring four years ago, um, uh, we didn't, you know, there were no federal funds and, and the federal funds that became, were starting to become available, um, they kind of had a lot of strings attached to them, things that would, that didn't fit our business model. Um, we wanted one of the things that was very, you know, we were very strong on um, uh, one of our tenants, both at the regional and local level in Chesapeake, was that we wanted to ensure that there was competition. We felt very strongly that in order to make you know, um, you know, Chesapeake a great place to live, learn, work, farm, and play, we had to have more competition. And so um, a lot of the strings that came with some of that funding were not going to feed into that. It was like, okay, have one contractor go and build this for you, and then they get sole rights to it for X amount of time. And we we're like, no, that doesn't work for us. You know, we want competition, we want free market. So, um, so we did a lot of this. We were ready to go with our own funding. Um, once uh, the, but once COVID hit and we had federal funding for a lot of that, you know, American Rescue Plan money, our money, um, we were able to basically use that money to fund a lot of our other priorities, freeing up even more money for us to be able to use towards the broadband. And so that's how we ended up, you know, navigating that. So technically. You know, it's not federal money funding this, but if we hadn't had the federal money to fund other priorities, that wouldn't have, you know, it, it would have opened, it definitely opened up the opportunity. So I, I can't say that we're not appreciative of, you know, federal and, and state funding, but um, yeah, this has really been, we were going to do this one way or another on our own if we had to. So I was uh, curious because I remember pre broadband authority, there was a lot of discussion like the uh, Hampton Roads Underground Utility Associations about creating an off ramp. <clears throat> well, like the cables came here yep. and we needed an off ramp to be able to access it yep. and, and light up our ring, if you will, and not keep that. Yeah. Well, so it is, was. <laughs> I was going to say, is that is that done? I mean, at the time it was linked to the development of some data centers and Key Beach, like in corporate landing. But is that off ramp done? I mean, are we true? Right. Here? So, so the, the corporate landing is where the cables come in. Um, now, you know, I think most everybody knows or maybe know um, that, you know, the hub for the U.S. is on this coast is up in um, Ashburn, right? And so they basically, you know, there's that corporate landing there has lines that go right up to Ashburn, which is really where we, a lot of our data, data farms are, a lot of the clouds. So when, you know, just for those of you who aren't super familiar with this, you know, when you hear cloud, that means that you know cloud computing. It means you're you're not storing your data on this here. You're storing it in a data center. We call it the cloud, but it's a data center elsewhere. And there's servers there, and so those. That's a very lucrative business, right? Um, but <coughs> a lot of that is up in Ashburn, and now and in, uh, Enrico County has kind of taken that. So they've got a line that's going up to Enrico County. The offer for us is still there, and that's what this is going to be. This is this is going to be that app, that off ramp. Our rings are now the off ramp for this region, and I think the key here is not to compete with the data centers that are in in Rico County, but probably to look at more of the you know industry base that would want to take advantage of the fact that we are because latency from Virginia Beach to Chesapeake is you know nanoseconds matter. But that's not that big a difference. But from here to Richmond, that's going to entail latency. So those industries that don't want latency, they're going to really want to gravitate to our. Any question? Susan, 
so we had a work session earlier this week about the Frank T. Williams farm. Yep. And I saw um, phase three on your plan appears to be the, the segment that would service that area. Right. What is the timeline for delivery on that? So it kind of depends on how quickly, you know, we're expecting to have the ring, um, you know, operational at the end of 2023. Um, whether all sections are operational at that point is going to depend a lot on our build schedule and the ability, you know, to get the fiber, um, because obviously there are now supply issues, but we're ahead of that curve. So the good news is, you know, for our matter of fact, on our regional ring, we just found out that uh, Danella, who's our, um, our builder constructor, um, already has the fiber, has already gotten a lot of the fiber. So the good news is we're already ahead of the game, um, but some of that's going to depend on how that plays out over the next several months. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping that within the next year, you know, two years that we'll be able to, if we do this build where we're doing it in multiple areas, then it will hopefully be a lot faster than we're looking at. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? I think um, Susan said this indirectly, but one of the things we're having some conversations about it 